Okay, let us start our tutorial for today. So in this tutorial, we have four questions. So our first question is, we are applying extreme value type one distribution. Second question, we are applying generalized extreme value distribution, GEV. And third question, we are applying partial duration series, PDS. Okay. And the fourth question, we are uh, reviewing a paper on the selection of best fit probability distributions. So in the first question, telling that annual maximum flood data for the Cypress Creek for the period 1975 to 2014 are listed in table 4.1. Assuming that the Cypress Creek data can be described by extreme value type one distribution, find the following peak flow for the 100 year flood and peak flow for 50 year flood. So, 100-year flood means 1% AEP flood, and 50-year flood means 2% AEP flood. So these are the equations for extreme value type one distribution that we will apply to our data and we'll estimate our QT. So QT is a function of mean, mu plus standard deviation times KT. KT is called frequency factor. KT can be estimated by this equation here, that KT equals minus 0 0.45, minus 0 0.7797, and then ln minus ln 1 minus 1 over t. So very simple. So this uh, distribution is really easy to use because we can estimate KT directly. We don't have to uh, use a table or Excel function. Okay, so let us uh, try to solve this problem. So let us uh, open the data. So I'll open the Excel file. So this is the table to the first question. So I'll copy it basically, control C, and then go to a new sheet here. Okay, so come here and then uh, we share the screen. So can you see the data? Yes, bro. Yes, sir. Okay, so, so this is the annual maximum flow data for different year. From each of the year, we are taking the maximum discharge yeah, meter cube per second. So to estimate our flood, we have to use equation according to EP distribution. So we are using our question on is on distribution. And in this distribution, QT equals uh, mean plus standard uh, deviation times standard deviation times KT. Can you uh, mute if somebody is talking behind you? So KT. So we have to use for different return period. So our return period is 100 year and 50 year. 
So we write here 100 year and 50 year, that is our return period. So that is our return period, say T in years. And then we have to estimate our KT. So our KT is a kind of complex equation. KT is a complex equation, which is minus 0 0.45 minus 0 0.7797. And then we have really number of log, first log, and then we have another negative of log of one minus one over T. Okay. So in this type of computation, it's better, better to uh, divide into number of parts. So first is that one minus one over T. So let me uh, create a column here, which I will say one minus one by one by T. So that is really one minus one by over T, this cell here. So that is my, basically this is F basically, okay. So then this is my one minus one over T. And then I have to take log of that. So I will take uh, basically uh, uh, minus ln of that value, which is minus ln one minus one over t. So that means, uh, because I have put a minus, so this is assuming it's an equation. So, Anyway, so I'll put a minus here. So minus ln of uh, that term here, basically. So I have calculated up to here, minus ln. Then I have to take ln of that again. So I will take ln of that again, equals ln of that figure. So this term sometimes called the Gumbel reduced variable. So sometimes we call this term the UMBL Gumbel reduced variate. So sometimes this term we call it Gumbel reduced variate. What's the formula for that, sir? So that formula is this term here, like ln bracket oh, okay, yeah. minus ln bracket one minus one over t. This is called Gumbel reduced variate. Uh, please remember it because this is wide, widely used in hydrology as well. They, they sometimes they label the x axis with this Gumbel reduced variate in a state of return period to make it more linear kind of graphs. Okay, now, we, because Gumbel distribution is the example one distribution, another name is the Gumbel distribution. That's why it's telling Gumbel reduced variate. Okay, now we have got uh, really up to that figure. Now, basically I can uh, estimate my KT uh, directly now. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So yes. how do you get the Gumbel reduced variate, the, those two values again? Like I need to estimate this value long and then this all this term. First I am doing one my on what T, okay? Because you see this term, instead of doing it one go, I am doing it a step by step. So in the first step, I do one minus one over t. Is that right? So you yeah. are not talking. So it means that you are not understanding. Or wait, sir, can no, you sir, press on? Yeah. Um, can you press on one the value for the gumbo reduced variate? Yeah. Press on negative four point six. So basically, I can do it again here. So I am calculating one minus one over t. So one minus one over t is the return period here, this cell. Is that clear? Then I'm putting inter. Then I'm copying it so that it, it will really do for all the return period. Even I can put more return period here. Say for example, I can do it for 20 year. I can do it for 10 year. 
five year, two area. These are some of the typical return period. So really, if I copy it down, it will do for all of them basically. Then I want to do the second term, which is the minus long of that variable, that column. So that's why I am putting here minus ln of uh, this term. You can do it on go, or KT, that's fine. But sometimes it's better to do with a number go, in my opinion, because then there is less chance of error. And then basically I am doing it now ln of that previous cell so equals ln of that cell here. So I have done up to here. And now I can do the KT directly now. So KT equals, the formula is minus equals minus 0 0.45 minus 0 0.7797. times, all this time I have already calculated, so it is here. Basically. So this is the KT for all different return period. So, so you see one KT is negative, which is, uh, uh, you can see for a smaller return period, KT is becoming negative. Anyway, so now once you know the KT, we can find out QT, is that right? QT. So to find the QT, we need uh, mean and standard deviation. So let us calculate our mean and standard deviation. So mean is average of the data, average of the data, which is our this data. And then our standard deviation of the data is equal to STDV, that is the equation for standard deviation, STDV. And then select all these values up to here. So that is our standard deviation. So we got mean and standard deviation. Now we can estimate QT from this equation. But that is the equation to estimate QT, which is my mean. I'll put a double uh, dollar sign to make it fixed value. Dollar here and dollar here. So that is my mean fixed. And then my standard deviation is this cell here. And I'll make it a fixed again, dollar sign and dollar here. Dollar is just to uh, make the cell fixed. Okay, and then uh, with that, I have to multiply with the KT, which is my this cell here, which is variable because I want to do that for different return period. So you see, this is the return period QT for uh, all different uh, uh, T. So this is unit will be in meter cube per second. So this is our final answer here for return, different return period. Uh, we have estimated our flood quantize using a beyond distribution. Do you have any questions so far? All clear? I hope so. Okay, so we can do a plot of this. Sometimes, we do a plot of these distributional values on the uh, flood data, which is an important thing that uh, you need to uh, know how to do it. And I think I explained that before, but I am doing it again because this is important. So if I want to do a plot of the frequency, uh, like our my observed annual maximum flow and the fitted distribution, how we do it? First, I am copying the data here, and then I am sorting the data. So data, sort it according to highest flow, flow with the flow QM, Q, and then highest to largest to smallest. So, okay, so that is my, so I have ordered the data into highest to lowest, and then I am putting a rank, 
rank is written by m is that right so this is my first rank and this is my second rank sorry this is my second rank and then i can copy it down the series because excel is smart it will copy the sequence based on the two previous values so i have 40 data points so that is my rank of the data then i can estimate the uh, return period according to non parametric method so return period uh, by non parametric method so what is the equation of the return period who can tell me according to coni it is uh, n according plus to equation tell me what is the equation yeah it is n plus 0 0.0, .0 divided by m minus 0.4 so everybody agrees with that that the Kunan's plotting position formula that is the uh, can you tell that again m uh, equal n plus zero point n. So what is our n value n. here? N is forty. Forty. So our forty n plus plus zero point two. Zero point two is that right? Divided by divided by m minus m is m one. The rank, this is variable minus minus 0 0.4 0 0.4 that is our kunan's plotting position formula is that right i think so no you have to be sure like i uh, let yes. me see it because you don't have to memorize it rather we have to find it from our uh, last lecture so find the kunan's plotting position from the last lectures Yes, sir, Can right. anybody find that the Kunan's plot and plotting position formula? Yes, sir, it's in tutorial three. It's correct. N plus zero point two m minus point four. So, um, so n is our forty. So that is our Kunan's plotting position formula. So I put it here, and then I double click it or copy it. It will be directly copied there. So that is my return period there. So we'll make a plot of this t against the flow, which is this cell here. So t in x-axis. That's why I'll copy this column again to my right there so that it's easy to plot for me. Okay, so now I want to plot this cell to cell basically in a scatter plot. So now go to insert and go to Excel here and do a scatter plot. So that is the plot that we are producing. Okay. Now in this plot, so we have to add the axis. So we have two axis title. First x axis is our, what is our x axis? T in year, is the return period in year? And what is our y axis title? Flow data. Flow data or Q. We are using flow dot rq, q in meter cube per second. Okay, now we want to superimpose our extreme value distribution EV on results over there. So basically, we need to uh, like this row, and also we have to do this one here. This two, you want to superimpose on that plot. So I will say control C. So it means copy and then I'll go to uh, select this plot area here. And then I'll go to here paste a special. And then I will select this category X values in the first column and say, okay. So now we will add a legend of the figure. Sorry, second year, we do that one more time. Okay. Okay, so what we did, I, I want to superimpose this return period and the corresponding uh, contrails, which is this column here, this two, and then I see control C means copy, or you can do copy by uh, the normal copying way. Is that clear? 
then we select uh, that plot where we want to superimpose the data. Then we go to paste here. Under paste, there is a paste special. Can you see the paste special here? And then I say series name in the first row, which is true, and the category X values in first column. And we say OK here. And then we add the legend here. So basically, uh, QT, we want to say that that is the uh, uh, QT meter cube per second, uh, which is true. Uh, but we want to say which technique is that? That is our EV on uh, distribution, basically. So. If I write EV on, then immediately that will come here EV on. So that is my EV on estimation. And that is the observed data here. So interestingly, one thing I want to show you that if we plot the gumball reduced variate, so we have our T here. So instead of T, if we do our gumball reduced variate, so gumball reduced variate, so I Z U M B L gumball reduced variate. So for each of the T, we can estimate our gumball reduced variate. Is that right? Which is basically ln of the, and then again minus ln, then again. 1 minus 1 over t is this 1, 2 bracket. I think 1, 2. So is that right? Ln of minus ln of 1 minus 1 over t. I think I'm correct. So that is the gumball reduced variate. I want to make it uh, absolute value of that. Okay, so that is gumball reduced variate. And I want to plot that against my flow data. So I'll copy this flow data again here. Control C and I'll come here and then I'll do a plot of these two and let us see how it looks. So insert histogram here. So I think uh, there has been some problem here. I think in this uh, reduced variate, let me see one thing here. If I don't put that, if I do up to here, only what happens? Yeah, that plot is no good. I don't like that plot. Okay, so I don't like that on either. So for this return period, this is my flaw. Why it look like that funny? For every return maybe because you did absolute value, sir. Yeah, that's true. You are you might be right, but let me then plot the uh, original value. Let me see how the plot looks. Yeah, probably you're right because it's increasing. You see, starting from a very big minus to there. So let us see how it looks if I take the sign in the plot. Okay, so insert number reduce variate. So it's, it's plotting in other way. 
which is not a big problem, I would say. But you see, the, my point is that it's becoming a linear curve. You see that for Gumbel, it has reduced very yet. It is becoming a linear plot. But previously, you see, oh, this plot was not linear. It is a kind of curvature. So now, if I want to superimpose my estimate that we got it from here, this is the EV1 estimate on that. So I am doing control C and I am going over here and I am going uh, special as values over there. So it did not really work at all. Did not work at all. So I think you superimpose the T from the other one. Because in that case, we have to use the Gumbel reduced variate. Uh, instead of this return period, that's yeah. right. so so basically we have to uh, plot uh, the uh, Gumbel reduced variance, which is this one here, against EV1 estimate, and then uh, Control C, and let us go to that plot again. Uh, we do paste special here, and we do it here. Okay. So now you see this plot uh, makes a lot of sense uh, that, okay, so we just add the, so we add the exit title. So what is our exit title here now? Who can tell what would be my X exit title here? Uh, the GRV. Gumbus reduced by the UMBL Gumbel reduced. B A R I A T Gumbel reduced variate. And my Y axis title would be same as before because I, we have not well, done anything with the Y axis. Q meter Q per second. So basically, then we can really bring this axis up to N minus here. That will look much better. So I think we can do that easily, format axis. And we say that uh, vertical, okay, let's do. So vertical X axis sir? crosses, vertical X axis crosses at minus five. Vertical X axis. Vertical axis crosses let me see what happens okay so so this plot makes more sense because your gum is really a kind of straight line plot and really you can compare better that how your revision estimate is compared with the observed flat quantile, but we see at the higher return period, uh, this observed data is here, but with the EV on, it's really, uh, so we just uh, put the legend here as well. So put the legend here. So we say that EV on is really doing a little bit bad at the, uh, at the higher return period. Okay, so I think we don't need this on here. Delete. Delete this on here. And we can keep that on as well, so that's fine. So that is the different axis there. So okay, any question on this? I'll go to now question. Uh, the three because question two will do that in R because that is the extreme value distribution using the probability weighted moment is quite complex. Uh, there are a lot of calculations involved with that, but in, in, we'll doing that we'll do that in R. Okay, now let us do question three, which is the partial duration series. So we have a partial duration series in table four point two.
Okay, so we will uh, go open that sheet. Let me open that data. Okay, so can we see that the partial duration series data here? Table 4.2 PDS. So we can see that in 1990, we have one value, 1992 another, uh, 93 another, but 94, there is no data here because 94 was very small flood at that year, small flow. Uh, dry year, 93, we have another on data, 94, we don't have data. So, and you see 1999, we have two flow values. <coughs> so in partial duration series from some year, there might be more than one value and some year will be missing. Because we are selecting all the data above a threshold. So this uh, technique is quite easy. So uh, let us, uh, uh, the, the equation for that, that QT, this method is uh, we have a Q0 plus we have a beta times ln of lambda times return period. So that is the uh, Q That is the uh, PDS method, PDS method, partial duration series. And where we have a beta equals, beta equal uh, mean minus Q0. What is Q0 here? Q0 is the smallest. data point. So this is an exponential distribution method. We can also do GPA, generalized Pareto distribution, but that one is a little bit more complex. So, so what we have to do basically, we have to take the data and find the smallest value of this. So we can find the smallest of the data point, which is our Q0. So our Q0 would be, minimum, minimum of that series. So why is that M-I-N minimum? I think minimum is only M-I-N, not minimum. So M-I-N and then we select up to here. So our minimum flow is 11.2 in the data series that happened in 1993, Q0. And we can find out our mean. So what is our mean data? Average of this values here. So then we can find our beta. Beta is uh, mean minus Q0, so that minus this. So this is our beta. And what is our lambda? Lambda is lambda is average number of event per year. So average number of event per year. So how many events we have here? So we can count how many events here. So the count we can use the Excel count. Count is it's twenty one.
So that is basically 21 events. And how many years of data here? 2012 minus 1990 plus on. So that is our average number of events per year. So we got our lambda, we got our beta, we got Q0, so we can find QT now. So our QT would be, so for different T, let us say this is our T, and then all the variable, there are two ways we can do it. We can do with the correct reference, like the absolute cell reference, but we, you can again put the same value here, beta, and then we have our uh, lambda, and then we have our uh, lambda, beta, and Q0, we have there all these values. So, so let us assume that we have our different Q. So these are the different return period. And say so this is our QT final. Okay, so our Q0 is 11.2, which is here. So that is fixed for all return periods. So I can copy it down. Beta is our 47.6 eight seven on four which we can copy it down for all the return period the same is fixed and lambda is our 0 0.9 on we say can you press on a number oh, can i see the formula we can do the because these are fixed <laughs> excuse me sir yeah can i can i see the formula for lambda press on the yeah. So lambda is really the number of events yep. per year, average number of events per year. We have 21 events here. Because we can count how many events, like if you count this. Yep. What do you do plus one at the end? That's right. So, and then uh, divided by last year plus the beginning of the year plus on. One thing you have to remember, you don't count the year rather you take the first year minus last year plus one, that is the period of the data covering. Okay, yeah, gotcha. The number of events per year, that is sometimes misleading. You have a good question. Okay, so now we can find out QT. So QT is really basically our equation that, or Q0 plus beta, beta is of this cell here. times ln of ln of our uh, lambda is our j19 times return period is our this cell here. So that is our QT for two year return period. And then if we copy it down, then it will be for 100 year return period, we'll get this kind of plot. So any question on this? Any question so far? Okay, if not, then uh, can I request Dr. Saika to take the attendance? Saika, are you here? Yep, Prof, I'm here. Okay, can you take the attendance of the students, please? Yep. Okay. Okay, so I'll take a break and take the attendance of the screen.
Hello everyone, good afternoon. I'm now taking attendance. Please be attentive. Ali Muhammad Al Hamidi. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Daniel. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Ahmed Sharmad. Ahmed Sharmad Aloit. <laughs> Ahmad Sharmad Alait. Ayman? Yes, yes, I'm here. Soshan? Amat Soshan? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Muhammad Asifullah? Present. Thank you. Sinan Sharmad Yusuf, David. Sinan Sharmad Yusuf, David. Okay. Then Alexander Leonardo Baker. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Then Kepad Bestrin. Yeah, yeah, miss. Okay. Thank you. Alex Brook. Yep, he miss. Thank you. John Kalim Queen. Yep, he. Thank you. Thanks, William Carpenter. I mean, miss. Thank you. Salah Darwish. Salah Darwish. Yuki Deshi? Yeah. Thank you. Nauruz Dungana? Nauruz Dungana? Okay. Suleiman Faisal? Suleiman Faisal? Excellent. Oliver Freeman? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Hanifa Gardishtani? Yes, present. Thank you. Bikal Gimeri? Bikal Gimeri? Okay. Lastlan Vincent? Lastlan Vincent Gibbons? Lastlan Vincent Gibbons? Gursa visiting. Gursa visiting. Gursa visiting. Hashem Hassan. Hashem Hassan. Daniel Atnosa Ige. Present. Thank you. Viha Jamshed. Fabiha Jamshed. Saviha Jamshed. Benjamin Stewart Kahane. Yeah, I'm here, thanks. Thank you. Azim Khan. Azim Khan. Vishmi Kanal. Vishmi Kanal. Present, Mama. Thank you. Manali. Yes, miss. Thank you. Agata Kosinska? Agata Kosinska? Present. Thank you. Sanchit Lalinda? I'm, I'm here, Miss. Yep. Thank you. Dilsen Lu? Dilsen Lu? Yes, Miss. Thank you. Chitras Mitra? Present, Miss. Thank you. Aaron David McAllister. Yep, here. Yep. Thank you. Then Ayush Mishra. Ayush Mishra. Excellent. Is that Anishia or? No, Ayush Mishra. Okay. 
אבינבון השללה? ניל ראקיס פאטל? ניל ראקיס פאטל? רוהן אנטוני פרסון בורן? אוסטין אייבן פריס? יוסוף הישאם רפאת, אוליביטוס ג'ריס בן רודריגו, אסן מיס, תנקו, ג'קוב רודריגוס, ג'קוב רודריגוס, יאם יא, תנקו, ברנדון רוזס, ברנדון רוזס, Oji Sadi. Oji Sadi. I think everybody is tired today. Muhammad Sadiq. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Sabita Shahi Mahal. Shahi Hamal, sorry. Sabita Shahi Hamal. Avina Bhutrashta. Here, yeah, Miss. Thank you. Thank you. Pranil Ban Singh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mutasim Tai. Mutasim Tai. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, that's me. Thank you. Naurush Nader. Domena. 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 Send. Min Nahat Chan. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Jiang Wang. Jiang Wang. Jiang Jiang. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Tamara Kohlio. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Thank you. Ali Ahmed, PhD student. Yes, Miss Ali Ahmed is here. Thank you. Nilufa Afrin. Yes, miss. I'm here. Thank, Thank you. you. Abu Huraira. Yes, ma'am. Abu Huraira here. Thank you. Orpita. Yes, ma'am. Present. Thank you. Amir. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's all for today. If somebody missed, uh, let me know so that I can correct it. Thank you. Uh, hi, Saika. Uh, this is Preeti. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm present today. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's all done? Yep, it's done. Bro. Okay, so we'll go to uh, next problem that we want to use our program to estimate quantize by the EV distribution because the EV distribution is not easy to uh, do is quite complex calculation. So we generally use some software to do it. So I'll show how to, we, we can use R to do that. Okay, so first thing in R, we know that we have to uh, prepare the data file. So, so we know okay. that really- can I talk? Sure. Uh, Priti, are you new today? Yeah, Priti uh, was here, I saw you. Yes, yes. Can you please uh, mention your roll number so that I can input? Student yeah, it's, it's one nine. One nine. Five seven. Five seven. Five seven. Five one nine three five. One nine two five. Thank you. Three five, it's three five. Three five? Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. So Priti is a PhD student. She okay, is attending pass. from India. Okay, pass. Thank you. I'm done. Okay, thank you.
Okay, so I'll be using R. So how is R? I'll go from the beginning so that it will be kind of revision. The first step is that we have to prepare our data. So let me uh, share the screen and I show you how we prepare the data. So we have our annual maximum flow data, for example, here in this case. So in R, what I'll do, I will create a new file so I don't disturb my old file. So I'll create a file that uh, GV application, so we say GV data. Okay, so in GV, uh, in, in when we wanted to prepare the data in R, we generally don't put any blank row in the beginning. We have to delete all the blank row. And we don't like to use the capital letter in the name of the file. And I'll just say here the flow, F-L-O-W, I don't bother with the unit here. And I don't keep a blank column at the beginning, delete. And I make sure that there is no blank data here. So just I select it and delete it, everything from the bottom as well, because if something is there, then R will, may not work. So it's very good idea to delete some of the, make it blank everything. So this is my data file in R, not in R, in Excel. And I want to use this data uh, in R to do something. In this case, GV distribution. So what is the next step? Who can tell me? Save okay. it as a CSV file. CSV file. So file save as, and then we go here. I say it, name of the file, GV data. So GV, so I'll put lowercase everything, GV, D-A-T-A -A data. So that is my data file name, that GV data. Okay, so GV data, and then what type of file I'll save? I'll go to save as CSV MS DOS CSV data. We can save. There are a few other data it works as well, but I will be using this version, this CSV MS, and say okay, and then file. You can close it here. That's fine. Okay, now what is the next step? We have to go to R, is that right? Yes, sir. So we are going to now R. So let me go my in my R program. So if you have installed R, then you'll find something like this. And then you, uh, can you see my R window? Not yet. No, sir. Not yet okay, sir. so I'll do screen sharing. Okay, just let me give me a second. So I'll do share screen and I'll do go to screen share. So can you see the R screen now? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, what is the next step? Uh, change change directory. directory, change file. So we go to file and then we go to change directory. So it means that we are locating R to the point. So we have the data, so it will different for everybody depending on your computer configuration. So I will select my folder where my data is. So it is under my teaching folder, under my hydro, uh, statistical hydrology. Statistical hydrology and under statistical hydrology, it is in different year. I have a different folder, 2021. And under that, I have uh, uh, tutorial questions, and it's under tutorial four. So it's under tutorial four. So now, under tutorial four, I select my uh, folder. Is that clear to everybody? Yes, sir. So you yes, have sir. to locate your folder. I think it's easy. Okay, now, first thing, what do we do? We have to read the data. Is that right? So reading the data is. So uh, we will say uh, any data file name. So we'll say the V 
data. Uh, we can give the same name, that's not a problem. And then we have to say read dot CSV. And then we have to give double inverted comma. And what is the name of our data file? It was GV data dot CSV, is right? I think that was my data file and header equal to header equals T. Okay, so intra. So then what is the next command we always do? Attach. We are decomposing the matrix into vector. G V D A T A data. Then we can, uh, like, we want to check the data, you know. So we let us see the names in the data file names of uh, G E V D A T A. So we have year and flow. And if we just put G E V D A T A, then we can see the data is read there nicely. And there is another command that we can use to see the data in a better way. Tanjim, can you call that uh, program, that uh, command? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Find this location and the. the uh, no, no, it's, it's like there is a common string or something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And G E V D A T A. So that is another command that we can use to see the data, like it will be shown in the like the ER. Uh, and then it is coming in this way string G E V data. Anyway. So we can see the flow of the data. That is the flow data. We can do a plot of the uh, ER with flow just to see how it looks. So that is the plot of the data. We can do a histogram of the data. Here is uh, the hist of the flow. That is the histogram that you prepared in your, your exam today, this kind of histogram. So for the histogram, what kind of distribution you can assume for this? The flow data, by looking at the histogram, what distribution you think is better for yeah, this data? Yeah. Which one? Is the normal distribution good here? No, sir. Because it doesn't look like a normal distribution. It's skewed, so yeah. Left is skewed, so it's a kind of... It's not exponential as well, because for exponential, you need to have your first Operator. column very high. We can actually place ourselves at the robbery. So it will be some yes. HTML distribution. Can you recall the HTML can take different shape? So it will be some kind of HTML distribution. So we'll be using ZV distribution for this. Of course, you can use other distribution as well, like normal other distribution as well. But we want to use ZV distribution today. So you can recall that in the GEV distribution, we have a probability scale that we estimate the return period, uh, reject the return period with F. And we'll be using F in our GEV distribution in relation to T, okay? So for example, our F for 100 will be for 100 year return period. Uh, what would be our uh, uh, F value? So F for 100 year would be, so if we say F equals, for 100 year, it will be one minus one over 100. No, no. And if, we, if we say F, then F equals 0 0.99. So it means that for 100 year return period, your F is 0 0.99. For 50 year return period, what would be the F value? So F for 50 what, year would be what, what, F what is 1 minus 1 over 50. 50. And then if we take F value, then this is 0 0.98. So these are the F values for different return period you can calculate by this one. R is very simple because you don't have to define a variable before. If you have done programming like Fortran or C++, other programming, you have to define a variable. But in R, really, whatever you type, that it takes as a video. Now, we have to upload some package here. You see in my screen, there are, can you see there is a package screen here? Yes, yes, sir. 
So everybody, please listen to it. There is in the R screen, you see file, edit, view, miscellaneous packages. So in these packages, you have to select, you have to load some packages or install some packages. So Tanjim, can you explain what we do here? Uh, yes, sir. For GEV distribution, we need to install the EVD package. So you have to go to um, install packages from, uh, you can see that on the screen, install packages. You have to click so on that. There is install packages there. Yep. So in, in R, there are many different packages. People have created it and they have put in the R uh, repository for other people can use it freely. Okay. So to uh, the, for GV distribution, we have to uh, install packages. So install packages. So I go there, install packages, and then we have to connect with a some, uh, like the, there are some repository in different country. So in our case, uh, which one is good, uh, Sanjim? I use um, Canberra, Australia. Canberra, Australia, okay. So Australia, you see Australia, Canberra, uh, is close to us, so we can select that on. So that means that we are trying to link somewhere where the repository has the different, different softwares are there, and we are trying to access the software. So you can you can try many other uh, sources as well, but it's better to use the nearby ones. Uh, but anywhere in Australia, I think we can use it. It shouldn't be a problem. Now we have to uh, install uh, the uh, EVD package for this. I'll send the note to you later on. I'll put the note in the views. EVD, so I go to EVD. So you see so many packages are here. Unbelievable thing you can do in R. You can spend your whole life by on researching on R and uh, applying it. So many things are here. So we are using EVD. So I got EVD here, so I put it okay. So I, would you like to use a personal library instead? No. Okay, it's telling some unable to install packages. I think it has been installed, I think. I think it has been installed, I, I believe. So we can ask, we can we can inquire about this any packages by putting to double quote and then a function of GEV function how it looks. So it really no results found. Maybe it has not installed the R. So. So it seems that it has uh, disconnected. Screen sharing. So you can start checking if you have it installed, like just check if it uh, can be loaded. So this is the manual. It has come the manual of the whole manual, like in relation to our writing, our extension, our data import, export, and all these things, sort of things have come here. So if we like, we can uh, check uh, this kind of things uh, in our computer. So I think I have to uh, open again the R probably because we cannot go back to there. Okay, anyway. So let me uh, go to R again. No, it's here. It was here, so. Okay, so this is the R thing here. And then like the, so 
So the function for the GV distribution is something like this. M equals F GV. And then uh, we have to uh, write the flood data, which is our uh, flow, is that right? Our flood data is flow, is that right? Flow or flood there, flow. And N S location parameter equals N U L L prob equals N U L L S T D dot E R R equals true correlation C O R R equals F A L S E false method equals within double code BF GS and WARN on dot INF on dot INF equals true. So this is a long command we have to write, which is specified by the developer of the function. Uh, so we don't have to remember it. It is available in the R manual. So this is our flow data that we are trying to fit the distribution. And then this is the NS lock is null. Prob is this, probability is null there, standard error is true, or is false, method is under double column BFGS and one INF. Equal true. So that is the command. Could not find function FGV, so I think our the software is not uploaded for some reason. So Windows. I think maybe, okay, so we have to maybe say uh, install, we have it said install. So I think we have to say require EVD probably. R E Q E Y L E require E V D So for some reason it has not been installed. So we have to do it again. Packages. Uh, we go to the load packages. Go to package and then uh, select repositories. This is already done. Packages and then install packages. So this is our EVD, we are selecting EVD packages. So would you like to a personal library instead? No. So unable to install packages, why is telling that?
So if you uh if you press yes to install that's all right. So let me say library. if I do yes. So I think it is installing uh, temporarily on the folder there. So now I think it is it is ready there. So now if we say require require EVD. So now it has it has really uh, install, installed it there, I loaded it here for use. So now if you want to see the, the form of that function, FGV, then we'll go there as before. So I have go back to R again. Okay, then we can see all the packages and all the manuals, everything there. So now if we want to use our, that uh, previous function, I can go back. So that was the package I, I put it there before. So it did not work for some reason. He's asking so, some more information. Uh, sir, it was a different comment. Uh, if you go up, you will see the the correct one. I think. That's right. Be... I cannot go back now. I think. Uh, try pressing Control Z. So that was the you comment, look, right? Uh... You might not have closed the brackets. Sorry, Amir, you mentioned something? Yeah, I've just mentioned that this is not the correct uh, comment. So you were using something else before, and then, um, but now this is the correct one. I it's the correct comment, but the plus sign is coming. So I have to try to control that. Yeah, close the bracket, sir. Close on bracket, but I did close on bracket there. So now it has uh, come through there. So, so now we can use the M uh, previous function, is that right? So the function that we want to use is, so that is the function you want to use, is that right? So that is the uh, function that we want to use, m equals fgv. So that is the function that we want to use. I typed it, so I go. I have gone back to it by pressing the arrow. So it has worked. So basically our parameter has been estimated. So we can see what are the parameters that have estimated. So we can see the location parameter of the distributions and scale parameter and shape parameter of the distribution. So what is the location parameter of the distribution here? So location parameter is 2.894 times 10 to the power three. And our scale parameter is 1.997 10 to the power three. And shape is 6.821 10 to the power minus two. So these are our parameters. And the standard error of the parameters are given here. That uh, standard error of the location parameter, scale parameter, shape parameter are given here. Now we can find out the 
quantize using this uh, location scale and shape parameters. So the equation that we'll be using is, is that Q quantile from GV distribution. And we have to write our probability scale for 100 year, what is the uh, probability scale for 100 year? 0.99. 0 0.99. That's right. So let us do 100 year. 0.99. And then uh, we have to uh, write our location parameter, which was 2.894 10 to the power of 3. So it becomes 2. 894, is that right? Yes, sir. 2894. Is that correct, Ali Ahmad? 2.894? Yeah, yes, sir, yes. Uh, 10 to the power 3, is it 2894? Or we can yes, do it sir. in Excel. After, after three decimal points. Yeah, we can do it in Excel quickly, just to uh, avoid confusion. Sometimes the uh, to the power number is not easy to follow sometimes. So let me do it here. 2.894. Another is 1.997. Another is 6.1. So I have to multiply the this term with 10 to the power three. So you get yeah, multiplication. Yeah, yeah, multiplication. Yeah, yeah. Here is the multiplication. Star times. So that's right. So yeah, I have times. To use times, not the power. And the second one would be this. Okay, so. The first one is 2894, second one is 1997, and third one would be this times 10 to the power minus, minus two. 2, which is 0 0.06. Eight to one. Okay, so these are our parameters. So I go back to my R. So location parameter is two eight nine four, and then scale parameter. I calculated that scale parameter is one nine nine seven. Shape. Zero point zero six eight two one. Maybe I put two decimal places here. So we have given the location square and shape parameter, and according to the manual, we have to say L O W L lower dot tail is true, true. Equal sign, sir, equal sign, not true, we for true. Oh, equal, yeah, that's right. You have to say equal true, you're right. Yeah. So writing a command always uh, good to double check it because if it does not work, then many confusion arises. So we have written the QGV or F value for 100 year quantile location parameter scale parameter, shape parameter, and then law tail is true. So I believe it is correct. So that means that our Q100 for this case is 13685.1 meter cube per second. So that is our Q100 according to the V distribution.
So for our Q50, what is our F value? So we can estimate F equals one minus one over 50. And we can ask what is F? This is 0 0.98. 9. So it means that I can go back to my that command. And what I have to do, I have to just change this. 9, 8, sorry, 9, 8. And then enter, so that is our Q50. Okay, so now for our uh, Q20, what we should write? F equals one minus one over 20 return period. So that means our F is 0 0.95. We go back to that command and we write here 0 0.95. So that is our Q20. So similarly, you can do for all the quantiles. So do you have any question on this? No, sir, it's clear, sir. So you see like in programming, sometimes it never works and then you try. So in my case, uh, I had some difficulty because I was selecting a wrong um, uh, like a, a button and then I was not able to upload the EVD package. So, so in many cases we have to upload many, many different packages. So I give another example here today that with using this data, if I want to fit another distribution, how we do it, let me see. So this is a logistic distribution, for example. So I think logistic, we don't generally know. I think I showed you normal before. I have another example here, logistic distribution. Let me see what other distribution I have. Okay, so I'll give you, show you another example is that if you want to generate data. So, so this is a histogram or a fitted distribution of the EV distribution and I want to generate thousands of samples from this distribution. Which in many cases we need that in our higher level application. So we are trying to generate many random samples from the fitted distribution. So, to do that, we use a common like this, that R, G, V, and then how many data we want to generate, say we want to generate 10,000 annual maximum flow from that generated, that from that fitted G, V distribution at the location. And then we have to say, what is our location parameter? So our location, what are the location? I think I wrote it here somewhere. So our location was 2894. Four and then we Sorry, I put two decimal there, and then our scale was, the scale parameter was 1997.00, and our shape was, zero point zero six zero point zero six eight twenty one. that was our shape. And then uh, if I, uh, so we are going to generate 10,000 data, location, scale and shape parameter of the EV distribution known. So if we say that, 
So it has generated 10,000 data from the simulated distribution. So does it make any sense to you? Now, yes, if we yes. want to open that data in a Excel file, so instead of 10,000, let us do a little bit less data generation so that we can handle better in Excel. So let us generate say uh, 500 years of data from this data. So it has generated 500, and all maximum flow from the fitted GEV distribution, assuming that GEV is the parent distribution. Now we can write that result in a Excel file, so we see write dot CSV. So I am writing this data uh, into a file. So I think uh, one thing I have not done is, I did something wrong because I have not assigned any value of that uh, generated data. So what I'll do, I'll say that is my UI, that uh, my generated data is Y, a vector. So that means that really my uh, data is Y. So if I now type Y, then 500 data points are there. Now I want to read this Y data, which is an R, and go back to Excel and open it in Excel and see how looks that data looks like. If you want to do a histogram of this Y, then we can look at the generated data histogram of that. So you see there, the initial histogram and this histogram, does it look same? I think so not. Histogram of the flow, histogram of the flow data that our original observed data. So histogram of flow is like this. And our histogram of Y, is something like this. So can you see any difference? Similar, so it's pretty same. I think almost, almost same, sir. Okay, so, so now we want to write that in a, which is this, please, this is an important command, that any result from R, if you want to write it down, any vector or matrix, then you use this command, right? C S B. And we want to write Y. And in a file, give the file name here, that whatever file name you want to give. I'll just I will say GV uh, generated data. GV generated data. And uh, it would be CSV file, CSV file, and then name of the file, whatever file name you want to give is up to you. So I have, uh, of course, forget about a inverted color comma here. Like, so you would write comma CSV, should be write dot CSV at the beginning. So write dot CSV, all right. I have done another mistake here. Thanks, Anzim. So write CSV, and then Y, we are writing and why and generate data in CSV file. I think it looks all good now to me. And then row dot names is F A L S E false. So write dot CSV uh, Y file equals G V gen data uh, dot CSV file and then row names is the row dot names. He wrote row dot names, names. That's right. So that will not work if I don't correct it. Row dot names false. So I think it's correct now. So every command you lie, you type, you just check it. Double say that's a habit of the programmer. So now in Excel, in my that mother directory, I should have that file there. Okay, so let us uh, check that. So let me go to my that Excel folder, like my parent folder, tutorial four. And you see, uh, can you see that I have a folder here generated G, uh, GV generated data? Yes. Can you see, yes, anybody sir. can see? Yes, sir, you can see. So this is my generated yes, GV data. 
So you see, this is my generator. How many data points I generated? 500, is that right? Yes. So this is the 500 data point that I generated. So now the, let us take the mean of this data and the mean of our previous data. So we can do, we could do that check in R, like in R, what I can do, I can say mean of the Y. So mean of the Y is four two four four. is that right? So mean of the Y is 4244.753. And what is the uh, standard deviation of the R? Standard deviation of Y, is that right? So standard deviation of the data, is data is 2759. Now let us check what is our uh, mean of our flow, which oh. is our observed data. Yes, flow. Which is four on on seven. So you see, mean is quite closing. Is that right? Very nearby. Yes, sir. Very close to. So the generated data has the very similar mean to the observed data. And let us look at the standard deviation, which will be different. I tell you, the standard deviation of flow. The standard deviation is two nine three eight, and our observed standard deviation is two seven five nine. So as the moment increases, then the really the difference increases because there are issues. Uh, it's, it's not easy to generate higher moments. Like it is not easy to generate data that will represent all the higher moments in a better way. So for example, for skew kartosis and so on, uh, you will get more differences. Okay, so today I have uh, shown you some important examples that how to read the data uh, Analog action flow data from Excel to R, and then how you uh, download a package uh, to fit the uh, GV distribution, and how you use that package to estimate your flood quantiles using GV distribution. Then finally, I showed you that once you know the location, scale, and shape parameter of the GV distribution based on your data, then you can use those location, scale, and shape parameter in quantile estimation, of course, and then again, in generating thousands of data points from the fitted distribution, assuming that our parent distribution, not even parent, our original observed data is following a GV distribution. So anybody has got any questions so far? So Orpita, are you here? Yes, sir. So do you have any question? No, sir. So for it's example, when you will be fitting your distribution, then you will be able to generate data from the fitted distribution. Uh, if your data length is too short to do something else as well, you can use that to develop your confidence limit, for example. Sir, can I make one comment, sir? Sure, please. So from your example, uh, I would like to say that the more data points we generate from this uh, GB distribution regression analysis, yes. so the data scatteredness would be less as per standard deviation is might be reduced with the from, from the original data points. So it okay, so let that, us check that. So let us check that. So let us check yeah. the hypothesis that Ali Hamad is telling that if we generate more uh, data points, then or property of the generated data will be closer to the observed data. You mean that? Okay, so let us do 10,000 general simulation. Okay? Is that right, Ali Ahmad? Oh, yeah, I, I just, I would like to say that the standard deviation might would be less. For let us see, let us try point. that. Let okay. us check okay. that. So 10,000, we are simulating that Y value 10,000 now. And now we want to find out the uh, mean of that y. So our previous mean was. It's, um, it's so so it is better now, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes. So it is almost coming closer to our observed data. Yes, sir. That's the central limit theorem, is that right? Yeah, yes. And sir. then if we say standard deviation of y. 
So our standard deviation y is two eight three six. Yeah. yeah. And then for our slope like. standard deviation two nine three eight. Yes. Almost. So, almost close. Almost close. So it's coming near y. Yes, sir. So the beauty is that you can generate any number of data here. Like you don't have to bother. Like whether yeah. if you want to generate hundred thousand data, you can do that. So instead of ten thousand, you do hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. And you see it's done in within a second or even a millisecond. And then you take the your mean of y. And then if you say your standard deviation of y, so it is d of standard deviation of the y, 2819, and our original standard deviation was 2938. So, you know, it's a, it's a kind of random variation there. So, if you want to do it again, then you'll see it will get another sample because it's doing in a random way. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so do you have any question? Anybody has any, any question? If not, then we'll finish it here today. Uh, there is a paper that we wanted to review it. Uh, maybe I can uh, open it very closely, really quick. Okay, so stop share. Okay, so we are going going somewhere uh, in the Okay, so we are sharing our screen again here. Okay, so can you see my screen with the with the paper? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this paper uh, compared the, uh, the you know there are many distributions. For example, we have used so far normal log normal, extreme value one, and uh, GEV distribution as well. And we have found that uh, the quantile estimates differ from one, uh, one method to another method. Then the question comes that which one we should select in our practical application in designing our breathe, embankment, or any other application. Uh, then really you need to compare more, you need to do some simulation and a lot of other things you need to do to verify your results. So in this paper, uh, my former PhD student Khaled Haddad and uh, myself, we uh, compare number of distribution for Tasmania, a state in Australia, and we published them in a journal called Stochastic Environmental Research and Risk Assessment, which is a key one journal. And in that journal, uh, we compared, in that paper, we compare number of distributions which we are showing So can you see here, what are the distribution we have uh, compared in this paper? Saika, are you here? Saika? Sanjeev, are you here? I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Saika, can you read that how many distributions we compared in that paper? Can you read the highlighted part? Yep. For this study, we considered seven different distributions. Two parameter normal, two parameter log normal, two parameter extreme value type one, two parameter extreme value type two, and three parameter log Pearson type three. Three parameter Pearson type three and generalized extreme value. Okay, so so far among these distributions, we have done normal already. We know normal and two parameter log number, same as normal basically. And EV1, we have done it. Uh, we have done LP3 as well. And we have done, L, uh, we have done the extreme value GEV as well. 
the number of distribution that uh, we have already taught you uh, that uh, this paper applied. And now, uh, what are the parameter estimate like the comparison? This is the data that we use, different stations in Tasmania. And we use different selection criteria, yeah, IC, BIC, this kind of thing. Uh, and some darling criteria. Uh, we use bias and different statistics to evaluate our models. We used to mon uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation. Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation is uh, as an important uh, uh, technique, uh, which is used to uh, evaluate the parameter of the distribution by kind of Monte Carlo simulation, and it really is better than the fixed approach. So in the results, what we found is at the end, So in the, in the paper that is telling that, uh, we examined four model selection criteria, which is the archaic information criteria on AIC, archaic information criteria on a second order variant AICC, BAC and information criterion, and modified Anderson Darling criterion. So these are the different criteria we use to compare the results of different distributions when we fit to a particular data set. And finally, what we found in this paper is that log normal distribution is the best distribution for Tasmania. We found the log normal distribution is the best distribution. And in terms of parameter distribution procedure, we found the uh, Markov chain, a Monte Carlo method uh, that is the best way, Bayesian Markov chain Monte Carlo. It's a quite complex procedure, and probably uh, some of the PhD students they probably might be using it if they want to use it, but it is not within the scope of the undergraduate student how to use it. But there are software; it is nothing hard nowadays because uh, most of the complex technique are um, uh, have been evaluated and software is there, so you can use the right software in the right way, that's all. Okay, I think that's all for today. Uh, anybody has got any question? If not, then we, I'll stop here. So stop share and then I will end the session for everybody.